We've had a fascination with these articulated loaders now for a couple of years. I would really like to have one of these on the property. Got an opportunity here to look at this cast loader today. And, and what I'm learning is that these loaders are different. They're not made the same. The different brands have some significant uh, differences mechanically and how they're driven. And I don't really know what I want yet. So we're gonna take a drive with this cast. Let's get started. Now I've just got a round knob here for the throttle. And uh, the, the, the cab I would say is not real quiet but it's, it's not crazy loud either. Now, all these controls that we see here are on the joystick, just like normal. It's electric over hydraulic controls. Now, you notice that when you get into this equipment instead of tractors, you've got a lot higher end controls. Now these valves are on off valves uh, for the, say the grapple there itself. Now this grapple is, um, it doesn't rotate hydraulically. It's a free, a free rotating grapple. Uh, I can extend this boom quite a long way. This unit is 57 horsepower. It's a Kohler KDI diesel engine. Okay. I mean, I can tilt it on up, but that's as high as it goes, even with the boom extended. It'll do two functions easily here. I'm just at 1300 RPM, almost at an idle. No problem at all. I, I asked them about the lift capacity. They weren't sure what the actual specs are. We'll look those up and we'll put those specs right here at the bottom of the screen for the lift capacity. One thing I was able to notice is the turning radius. Look at this. This is absolutely phenomenal. I, I'm stunned. Of course, the camera people are backing up here. Two or three people are shooting video. They think I'm gonna run over them, but hey. No, this, this, is, this is pretty amazing. The, the turning radius is really neat. Now, one thing that's different about this than say the Ventrac is that it doesn't have any horizontal uh, articulation. So, they say that it provides more stability, and I, that makes perfect sense, um, but it is gonna limit the ground contact in some, some degree. I'm gonna run it wide open air for a minute to see what the cab sounds like. So you can hear that, that's what it's like wide open. I really don't know why I would need it wide open for the hydraulic aspect, because it's had plenty of power even at low, lower throttles. Um, so yeah, that's, that's really nice. Now, this is idle right here. I don't feel like the visibility is great, at least up close. The further out I get uh, the, the boom, then uh, I feel like I have better visibility but I don't know if that's specific to this brand or if that's overall. Now this is the biggest unit they have. I'll back up just a little and drop that log. Now the pedals are forward and reverse, forward being on the right, reverse being on the left. That's backwards of our little tractor. And to be honest, I would say it's probably more like that our tractors are backwards of, of what they should be. It really makes sense to have forward be on the right. Um, and I'm not sure who started the forward on the left, but hey, that's the way it's been for a long time. Let's try one of these smaller units. I see one over here with a power rig. Now this machine sounds very familiar to me. It's the 24, 25 horsepower Kubota diesel sounds just like the Ventrac engine. It's very comfortable. Now, let's see, we've got a power rake on here. We can raise it all the way up, like who would ever want to use a power rake up there, but, but we can. And yet we can lower it, we can tilt it, so we can get our gauge wheels just how we want them, control our depth that way. Okay, so let's, let's try that. Let's turn it on. 
Oops, I have to have my hand here, yeah. On the joystick, uh, where your second, third, and fourth fingers go, there's a, a big, long lever that you have to be holding at all times. Uh, and that's a, a safety uh, outfit. So we're going to crank up the uh, RPM here a little bit. See what we can tear up. Works very nice. Now I've got some rotation here. And it's not really, I think, uh, wired up the way it needs to be. And just like always, to go backwards, you rotate it the other way. I'm dusting out the camera lighting. I bet Christy's complaining. It's got plenty of power for it. I got better visibility with this than I do the Ventra. I'm actually quite surprised. I can see the rotor all the way across. Now, I'm not very comfortable with it yet. It makes sense, right? I mean, I just got in it. But the visibility is great. And, you know, I've got control. If I want to run right up next to a fence, I could run right up there like that. I could run right into a corner. Um, yeah, this is, uh, this is interesting. Now, now I'm spinning. Oh, this is a feature they told me about. Okay, so I want to show you here. I'm in a position right now where I've got a wheel off the ground, right? I, I mentioned that the there is no horizontal articulation here or, or left or right articulation. So notice I'm spinning a wheel here, so I can't move. But I've got this button here that I can lock in four-wheel drive. And, and I said, is it like a differential lock? And they said, no, 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 it's better because you lock all four wheels into that same position. So I'll show you again. I'll drive up here on the hump and I spin that wheel. See, it can't move, but I can lock it in and I can, I can go right over. And that's a button right here on the joystick that I just hold down while I want to do that. Here I go again, or lock it in. So this is one of the differences of this machine is that it doesn't allow that uh, left to right articulation whereas some of the others do. Um, and there are pluses and minuses. One of the pluses is that when you have a big load lifted up, right, you're going to have some better stability because it's not going to tend to have that, that rotation that you might get in some other units. OK, I like this. Let me check out the turning radius of this thing. Not going to make it there. I don't think. I am going to make it. Now this, again, this is a 24, 25 horsepower machine. Uh, it still has electro over hydraulic for the hydraulic controls. The throttle is a mechanical, just a cable throttle whereas it was an electric controlled throttle on the larger unit. Fascinating. Pricing on these things, uh, as equipped here with the cab with heat, no air conditioning in this one, 58, 59,000, somewhere in there for MSRP retail price. Of course, as with any pricing, who knows? Inflation the way it is, it, it, by the time you see this, it may be 10% more, who knows? Um, with an open station version, they're saying about 52000 at this point. It seems expensive until you think about some of the features. Uh, a lot of, of electric over hydraulic features, many more valves than what you see on a compact tractor, much more flow than what you see on a compact tractor, more lift capacity. Uh, it, it, 
it doesn't really directly compare to anything in the compact tractor world. What it might compare to is a small skid steer, right? Um, and so I, I think that's where it's got my fascination on, on these units is that some places where people are using a track loader or a skid steer today might find these to be a better fit. A little bit less money maybe, don't tear up any grass, um, just maybe a little more nimble in certain situations. I, I, I'm fascinated by these, by, by this design in general. People cry out under a load of oppression. They plead for relief from the arm of the powerful. But no one says, where is God, my maker, who gives songs in the night?